What's going on, 4.0 Solutions? I'm Zach Scriven, your host. And uh, today we have a really special stream for you guys. Today is the last live Q&A stream of 2021. Uh, we're taking the week of Christmas off as, um, and also yes, yeah, so next week and then week of Christmas. We will not be having a live stream. Um, we will be kicking it back up again in 2022. We haven't missed a week all this this whole year. So we do think that it's important to take a break, give you guys a break as well. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about what is a digital transformation maturity assessment, or as we refer to it on this channel and in the Discord, a DTMA. Hey, Mario. Hey, Rob. Um, if I'm coming through clear, let me know. I'm using a new computer, my MacBook, uh, my MacBook Pro with the silic Apple Silicon came in. Believe it or not, this is actually the, the webcam on the MacBook Pro. It actually is better than this Logitech. Um, not quite as good as Walker's uh, mirrorless camera. Um, but yeah, today, um, you know, we're going to be going over what is a DTMA. I'm also going to, I said in the last week's uh, launch event, you know, we're, our mentorship program is now live. We had 25 people sign up over the weekend. So that was truly amazing to get such a great response. Uh, I'm still going through all my Discord messages and granting you guys access to the mentorship Discord role. So if I haven't gotten to you yet, uh, just please be patient. I will get to you guys. Um, yeah, yeah. Last week was really a blast. And, um, if you guys missed last week's stream, I'll, I'll leave a link to it down below or a card in the corner. Uh, one of the things I did, didn't get to touch on was I did, I did say I wanted to, um, you know, touch on the differences between what is mentorship, what is mastermind. So I do want to go over that. Um, I actually have a presentation that I did at the beginning of the year. So I want to pull that back up and then we'll go into, uh, digital transformation, maturity assessments why it's a tool you need in your toolbox for 2021. Um, a couple of weeks ago, you know, a couple of moons ago, I was actually in a uh, DTMA meeting with an IT group. Um, essentially, a DTMA is, is, the, is the solution to all of your problems in your business, it, right? You know, it's that splinter in your mind that you know there's something wrong with your manufacturing organization. You know, why is it we can't hire any millennials? Why is it it takes th uh, four weeks to six weeks to get anything done in an IT organization? You know, all of these problems and then some in, in every division of your group, we address that in a DTMA, right? It, we'll talk about in Mastermind. That's one of the things, that's one of the biggest takeaways and biggest values of Mastermind that differentiates it from mentorship is we teach you how to do a digital transformation maturity assessment. There's a 23 point assessment that we give you that document, all 23 questions. So you can, you know, if you're a system integrator like Kevin Jones with Ectobox, he's doing a handful of DTMAs right now. And in next year, he's going to continue to do them. So, um, you know, that's one of the biggest things that we wanted to help scale was, you know, we 4.0 solutions is growing. You know, we hired Alan Ramsey, who's one of our DTMA specialists now, but we also work with the community, you guys to teach you guys how to do this. So. We're going to be going over it today. Um, hopefully, I don't cover anything that's too much. I am going to reveal a little bit more than we've ever talked about before publicly. Hopefully, I don't get fired. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, but no, we should be good because, um, you know, we give out a lot of free value on the, on the here on YouTube. And, you know, people still find value in going deeper, like by joining mentorship or joining Mastermind or, you know, a lot of the people that hire us to do DTMAs, they come from mentorship. Right. They're, they're already in our mastermind and they still that's actually one of the better ways to do it is if you've gone, taken a chance to go through that mastermind content, then work with us or one of our partners to do a DTMA tends to go much smoother. So, hey, Liam. Hey, Mason. We do have a mastermind session this Friday. Um, all of the mentees got an invite to that. So you guys will be able to join for the first hour. But um, I actually. I don't know if I can actually share my screen here because I'm. I didn't get a chance to, I don't think I can actually, oh damn, that sucks. I'm not live on Restream. I'm actually just live on the YouTube uh, studio. So I don't know if I'll be able to share my screen, but uh, bear with me. Um, I can reference what I'm talking about here. You know, that's what we'll do actually. So um, I'll actually share a link to the presentation that I'm going to talk about right now. Um, we did this on a, like we had this mastermind clarity call. So anyone who was like considering joining or you know, wanted to learn more. We gave them, you know, like a 30 minute presentation. We jumped on a Zoom and sort of just shared the differences between the two programs. But let's see, I wrote this in January of 2021. So 
all right, a brief outline. What is the, what what the program is? Why we created the program? How does the community benefit from the program? Who is it for? And how does it work? And this is about masterminds specifically. Again, if you guys want to know more about mentorship, you can watch the live stream last week. But I wanted to kind of touch on the differences here. So uh, timeline of 4.0 solutions by milestone. So I did uh, like this flow chart. And in 2013, uh, we did the Enterprise Skater Project. Walker and Zach met, met Zach, that's me. We met on an uh, award-winning Ignition Enterprise Skater Project. In 2016, um, you know, a couple years later, Intellic Integration was founded. Uh, Walker Reynolds built an Industry 4.0 integrator, right? Built on Industry 4.0 concepts. So that's when Intellic Integration was founded. In 2018, 4.0 Solutions was started. And that really started as a products company. Um, you know, many integrators will have like a, an MES product or a couple other products. D the DTMA is one of our products. Um, and really mastermind and DTMA, there's a lot of similar, there, there are a lot of similarities between the two. One is mastermind group coaching content. We teach you how to do DTMAs. Another one is same, same concepts that we teach. We talk about them in the meetings. We go through that same 23 point question assessment on the kickoff. And then there's a series of five core meetings that we have, you know, 10 to 12 questions for each one of those meetings that we give you that template. So really it's just one product, right? There's different levels, right? Mentorship is a stepping stone to mastermind. It's teaching you the technical skills uh, like uh, uh, that you need to, to, to be a developer on one of these projects. Mastermind's teaching you the leadership skills and DTMA is, is consulting. We do it with you, right? Um, but yeah, so that's when 4.0 solutions was started. We really got, uh, really didn't, hit our exponential growth phase until like this last year, year and a half. Um, at the beginning of the year or about a year ago, we had like 4,500 subscribers. So we like tripled in the last year. Uh, same thing with Intellic. Their business has skyrocketed in the last uh, last year, year uh, 18 months or so. So, so you want to expect, you know, you, you might want to expect that. Like if you just joined today, it may take, you know, six to 12 months for it to really start you know, taking, you know, for that mindset to really shift. And then, you know, from 12 to 18 months, that's when you should expect that exponential growth within your business, either personally, whether you own a system integrator or you are a manufacturer. Uh, yeah. So I said in 2019, we hit, we hit, it was in 2019 actually that we had a thousand subscribers. And then in 2020, we had 4,500. And then, you know, now we just close to 15,000. Um, in 2020, we, we launched three new products um mentorship mastermind and dtm which really are kind of like three legs you know it's kind of like a triangle right um i did drop a link i did drop a link to this presentation so you guys can take a look at it um gosh i wish i could share my screen right now but i do do apologize but yeah i dropped it again there so i'll also link it down below so it, it just sort of talks about um you know our three products mentorship mastermind and digital transformation maturity assessments we also do do one on one coaching and consulting. Um, you know, if you're an integrator, that's really who's been buying that is buying one on one time with Walker. It's really it's really hard to get. Believe it or not, even I have trouble getting getting on calls with Walker. Um, but you can get individualized coaching and consulting to help you with your transformation. Um, you know, as an integrator, we're, you know, we're working with um, a couple of them that are in our group. So so what is digital digital factory mastermind program? It's an online course. It's a monthly mastermind, it's discord support, and it's our, it's our playbook, our digital transformation maturity assessment framework. So who is it designed? Uh, what is it? Who is it designed for? Um, it's designed. Well, let me, I have to talk about our mission first. We started digital mastermind to educate the industry on IIoT industry 4.0 and digital transformation in service of our mission to save and create middle-class jobs. We know that if manufacturers, system integrators, OEMs, and end users don't leverage IIoT and Industry 4.0, we'll lose a ton of jobs. So that's really what this whole thing revolves around. Um, I was I was going to make a joke, you know, because Industry 4.0 mentorship program registration is now open. Uh, that we're doing a special buy the Industry 4.0 mentorship program and get the Industry 5.0 mentorship program absolutely free. 
Um, and the joke is that they're actually one and the same. We've been teaching industry 5.0 concepts without even knowing it for you know the last three years. If you look back at uh, what is the industry 4.0 mindset, what is the mindset of an industry 4.0 professional? Number one, absolutely 100% values-based and mission-driven, right? Um, th there's a couple of other industry 5.0 concepts that we haven't quite talked about yet, uh, like circular manufacturing, but you know that sort of plays into supply chain, which is what we're talking about right now in Mastermind. Um, community benefits, leverage the online course library and refer back to key topics over and over again. In fact, you know, it's because we've already done 12 months of mastermind sessions in January, starting at end of January, we're going to do a 12 week accelerator. So we're going to go through, you know, month one, module one, month two, module two, and we're going to go through that week after week and get together with anyone who wants to, even if you've joined at the very beginning, we, we're giving you a chance to go back through that content and then review it in a collaborative group discussion to really get that mastermind uh, going again, right? Help you accelerate through that content and then, you know, still so you can get caught up and then enjoy all the content for that's to come in 2022, which is part of our monthly masterminds. You know, digital transformation is a process. There is no end, right? It, you have a problem, but there is no end, right? It continues to iterate and develop over time. As we acquire new knowledge, we develop new training that builds on the previous, right? So we eat our own dog food here. And then there's a mass mastermind discord support. Um, you know, reach out to us on the mastermind discord where we're there to, we're there to answer you. Uh, we actually hired Josh who's there in the discord, sending me messages when, when I'm not able to get to them myself, you know, he's prioritizing, Hey, you know, we need to answer this or uh, a couple, you know, a month ago, Rogerio was like, Hey, you know, I want to look at you know, such and such concept. And he's like, you know, hey, let's schedule a meeting. So, um, you know, we can, it gives us an opportunity to support you and go deeper. So it's, who is it for? It's for solutions architects. Well, really it's for someone who wants to be a solutions architect. System integrator that's tired of industry 3.0 wants to go 4.0, whether that's in your own company or you work for an industry 3.0 integrator and you want to develop the skill sets to work for an industry 4.0 integrator or it's for plant engineers, executives that want to know how to digitally transform. That's who it's for. This uh, DTMA we were on a couple of weeks ago, we got off the leadership session and we were debriefing and Walker mentioned, you know, one of the leadership people, I think it was a chief manufacturing officer was like, hey, that was really valuable. You know, he said, this was a good use of our time. And so, you know, given that, the DTMA rhymes, you know, the DTMA is of the same cut from the same cloth as our mastermind program. You know, Walker's like, hey, we should do enterprise training for this client. Um, you know, in fact, actually, I didn't mention it, but tomorrow we're develop, we're, we're adding to our mentorship program or, you know, for enterprise training, we call it our non-technical training. It's this training that we give to the entire organization, right? They pay one price um, and then their whole organization gets access to the content. So, um, needless to say, it's super valuable because, you know, they realize, Hey, look, this is a good use of our time. Their chief manufacturing officer said it like, Hey, we're starting from the ground. We're starting from ground one. We're starting or ground zero. We don't really know what we're doing. We want to get a common understanding that, you know, to Walker, he's like, Hey, that's, that's enterprise training all the way. So we're going to be recommending enterprise training for that client. Um, you know, we don't do it for every client. Some clients are small and agile enough that, you know, just just like a few of their people join mastermind, then that works for them. But, um, you know, actually I was worth it. I was talking with a system integrator yesterday who he's signing up 10 of his people for mastermind. And there's like a 20, there's like a 20% discount if you have more than five people. So he's getting like two or three seats for free. Um, you know, depending on if he gets 10 or 12 or something like that, but that's a huge value, right? Five of his engineers, a couple of his salespeople, his business partner, he himself, the owner of the company, he's like, Hey, you know, I want to, our company is going to stake, you know, put its stake onto industry 4.0. And so, you know, incredibly valuable, super awesome. Um, so looking forward to, to that. Hello, Markive. Hey, Paul, Paul, thanks for joining the industry uh, 4.0 mentorship program. I saw you join this morning. Hey, Markive. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Johan. Hey, Devin. Hey, Alan. <laughs> no worries. No, no points taken off, Alan. I know, I know it's like uh, lunchtime for you. So 
Anyways, let's get into what a digital transformation maturity assessment actually is. Now that we talked about what mastermind is, right? Um, yeah, well, how does it work? Well, there's one more slide here, but it's, it's pretty simple. Like we have free content, enjoy our YouTube content, join the discord for free, take our IOT mini course for free, which is actually one of the modules in our enterprise non-technical training. Um, you know, as, as, as we develop out the enterprise non-technical training, we're rolling that back out to mentorship. So the module we develop tomorrow, anyone in mentorship is going to get access to, um, next month we're developing a fifth module that's going to roll back out to mentorship too. So that's actually how we like to do it. We really like to take resource, you know, we like to leverage resources from those who have it and, and help those who don't. Right. So, you know, we realize that there's a global community, not everyone can afford to, to pay for this training on their own. So that's why we like to, you know, provide free, a lot of free training, uh, mentorship for those who really want to take it seriously and go a little bit deeper and then mastermind for those who just want to take it to that next level. Uh, they want to transform themselves. They want to transform their integration business. They want to transform their manufacturing plant mastermind all day. So yeah, any questions so far? Hey everyone. Hey Mohammed. Markive, what's your name in discord? Yeah. Um, if you guys can try to use your name and, and actually upload a picture to discord, we've got like over 3000 people in there. It helps to have pictures. Anyone who joins mentorship or mastermind, I, I def, I personally asked them to, to add a picture just so we can kind of become more familiar, leverage that community to, to know, to know one another and, um, really helps with familiarity for sure. The DTMA is the right tool to know where we are and to define where we're going to do Yeah. couple of in that uh, DTMA, uh, we were in a couple of moons ago. We were in the IT session, which the IT session is usually the most difficult. I was, I almost made a joke like, so Walker, the IT session is usually the best session, right? But I didn't want to start things off on the bad foot. So I kept my mouth shut. But um, yeah, one of their, the chief information officer was saying, hey, you know, at the end of the call, he's like, you know, you know, you're not telling, you know, it's really about you know, IT, their biggest struggle is being going from security and compliance organization to a service organization. And Walker will talk about, hey, you know, this is this is inside baseball, how we do what Walker talks about in the DTMA. Um, if I go to if I if I'm an engineer and I need to spin up a VM, how long does that process take? Right. And they're like, oh, you know, it's well, they got to fill out a request and there's a multi level, there's multi tier of approval and then you know, it could be done in like a couple of days. And in reality, it's and then he and then Walker will be like, hey, you know, actually, how long does it take? He'll ask someone on the plant uh, from the from the OT team and they'll be like, oh, you know, it takes like a month or something. So on average, it takes like four to six weeks with a, a security and compliance IT minded organization, a service based IT organization like the like Amazon, you know, Amazon Web Services is the IT service organization for Amazon and you could just go spin up a VM in 10 minutes, right? If I work at Tesla, I can go to, uh, go to SharePoint, look at the, look at the, the how to on, you know, how to spin it up. Right. And what is security group I need to add my VCP to, uh, you know, my EC2 instance, what V what, uh, what security group do I need to add it to, to get access to my data leg, to get access to my, you know, my plant controllers, boom, in 10 minutes, I can spin it up. Right. I'm just being billed by the hour. At the end of the day, I could spin it down. Right. So it's all, you know, operational expenses versus like, hey, let me cut you. Let me, let me put in a IT request. It's a big capital expenditure. Right. It's going to take five years to, for it to pay off. That's never going to work in digital transformation because it's not agile enough. And um, the IT guy was like, you know, Walker, you're not telling us anything we don't, we haven't already, you know, this isn't new for us. Right. We, we've known this for, eight, 10, 15 years, 16 years, he said, it's like 16 years. So I sort of was in disbelief right there, but he's like, the problem is, you know, the senior leadership, senior, we, we make the case to the senior leadership. And then, you know, they they have that CapEx mindset as opposed to the OpEx. And then Walker asked, he's like, well, who in this, who in the senior, <laughs> he sort of asked the question, like who in the senior leadership is the problem? Because it's not the, you know, chief digital transformation officer. 
right? We talked to the chief digital transformation officer in the um, in the leadership meeting last week, and he didn't have any problems with it, right? So it's not him. He's on board 110%. So then he sort of backpedals. He's like, well, you know, I'm not going to name any names, but we don't we don't make the case to an individual. We make the case to the leadership team and then they, you know, make, you know, they, they come up with the decision and then we just go on about our duties. And then, uh, you know, in the debrief call, like it was kind of a while ago, so I don't remember exactly how it went, but, or word for word, which I, I normally remember Walker's, uh, Walker's, uh, dialogue word for word, but he said something to the effect of, you know, when, when that guy said, we've known this for 10 or 16 years, I wanted to say, well, if you've known it for 10 or 16 years, why haven't, why isn't it done already? Right. If you've known that this is the direction you need to go, which by the way, no one 16 years ago was thinking like this. It was barely even 16 years ago that Jeff Bezos wrote that letter, you know? So, you know, one, I found that hard to believe, but two, if you've known it for 10, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. They've known it for 16, 17 years. Why isn't it done already? Right. If I'm working for that company and I'm trying to do something for 17 years, you don't think I'm going to quit? So we sort of, <laughs> I'm like, wow, that guy really painted himself into a corner there, you know? Um, it kind of exposed himself. I mean, he, one, he's a chief information officer, so he know he is senior leadership, right? Um, and then he's like sort of political with his answer, like, well, we don't make the case to individuals. I mean, come on. If you're making the case to senior leadership and you know there's someone not on board, you don't think you're going to send them a Teams message and or re reach out to them, take them to lunch, be like, hey, look, you know, I know you're off board, but or I know you're having hesitations about this transformation, but let's let's see how we can make this work together. You know, like you're going to make the case to individuals if you really want to get something done, right? There's going if there's a roadblock, you know, what Walker will say. You know, often there's um, you know there's people that are like in the last five years of their career, and there's really two types of those people. The most common person is, hey, you know, I'm here in five years. I don't really care if the company's gone in ten years, right? Like it's it's a job for me and that's fine like we, we we totally respect that all we ask is that you don't stand in the way and then there's the second type of person which is more rare who they want to go out with a bang right they want to make an impact um you know they don't they don't they they, they don't care about getting fired they're like hey you know walker i want to do this because i want to leave an impact on my company right it even gets to be like an emotional thing but um Let me see what the comment said. Last Q&A. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you, Mario. We'll see you. We are having the mastermind call this Friday, so we will see you there. Um, we and expect we will be posting content, just not live Q&A. We do need to take a break. Uh, you know, I don't want to get burned out and that stuff. So, um, hey, I'm doing a bachelor's of engineering and IoT. What projects should I work on? Uh, Techaholic. Uh, definitely want to get like a, a industry 4.0 board get get a get an arduino pro get a pn you know potenta machine control get a get a plc next get a opta 22 groove rio groove epic it's a little bit more expensive but play around with the technology start building out a project um if you want our mentorship program is on sale right now for the next week and a half um you know there's a 40 percent off coupon code if you use code 40 solutions at checkout you'll save 40 percent off our mentorship program Highly, highly worth it. Great investment. Again, we just had like 25 people sign up over the weekend. We expect another 25 to 50 more uh, before the the sale closes. Um, something that we're doing different in 2022, you, you don't have to sign up now. Uh, you can sign up at any time. We're not going to close registration because we, you know, the, the the mentorship program has gained enough critical mass that we don't need to do like launch waves anymore. We can just sort of leave it open for registration. But the forty percent off coupon code will expire uh, midnight on the twenty fourth. So, Merry Christmas! Welcome. You know uh, that does include the the Code Academy Pro license. So, Code Academy Pro, we're we're leveraging that heavily. Uh, before we had like some Udemy courses, and um, you know those, depending on when when it was on sale or not, it cost anywhere from like ten to a hundred dollars. So we just really wanted to incorporate all those costs into one one low price you know as low as we can get it for you guys um you know i won't you guys can 
click the link below, see what the price is with the 40% off. It, it does, it does, it's, um, not cost prohibitive. Let's just say that. So, um, Paul said, there's definitely a difference from knowing the concepts from digital factory mastermind compared to mentorship framework system design. There's actually, you know, mentorship takes a lot of time. That's one thing that I do want to warn you guys is it's going to take a few months. You know, it's going to take at, at least a few months. Um, most people take about six to 12 months to go through. Um, we're, it's no longer an annual subscription. It's just a one-time price. You get access forever, take as long as you need. Um, but um, the Code Academy Pro license is one year because we pay for that yearly. But um, yeah, once you finish that, you know, it could take like, let's say four hours a, a week for six months or, you know, eight hours a week for three months, you know, just depending on how quickly you want to go through it. You could go through it 40 hours a week, be done in a few weeks. It just depends on what you're doing. So, you know, work, you know, work on Saturdays. We have a Saturday call, like people get together. That's kind of hosted by like uh, Dave Schultz. You know, he hosts like this Saturday uh, call like every other week. So you could reach out to him on Discord and get information about that. Um, I found it beneficial learning the mentorship components so I can train. Yeah. And if you join Mastermind, you also get access to mentorship. If you join mentorship first and complete it, we want to incentivize you to complete it. We give you a coupon code for $500 off Mastermind. So at that point, you know, mentorship basically pays for itself. You get most, you get, you know, you'll get most of your money back when you, you know, if you decide to upgrade a mastermind. So, cause like, you know, if you were to join mastermind, you get in, you get the access to the mentorship content for free anyway. So we just wanted to not discriminate people based on whether they wanted to take their time, do mentorship first, then go to mastermind or just take mentorship and then go work in the workforce for a few years. Um, or someone who's like, Hey, you know, I just want to join mastermind. We give you all, we give you the keys to all the content. Um, Mohammed, may I recommend mastermind program? Thank you. Mark Hive. Um, Mohammed said, Hey, I'm into mechanical design engineering. I wanted to switch to MES consultant, like a smart factory, digital automation. Can you please guide me how I should proceed and what are the best things I learned? You know, I would agree with Mark Hive's, uh, comment. Um, Think of how much more confidence you'll go into a sales call with a client after sitting with, you know, through a couple of mastermind sessions for, you know, eight to 12 hours and you have the DTNA framework, you, you have a proven strategy for success and helping your clients succeed. That's what a consultant does, right? Um, Alan Ramsey, we basically throw him into the deep end, put him into the mastermind content and he's doing his first DTMA right now, actually. He's co-leading it with Walker and uh, next year, he's going to be doing like a handful uh, in the first quarter, right? One of them, I'm going to co-lead with him. And then after that, he's basically going to be doing, you know, so in, in three months, basically, he's going from, you know, still, you know, industry veteran, right? But, you know, taking that experience and, and applying our methodology, and, you know, now he's, you know, going to be a rock star consultant. So um, looking forward to have Alan back on the podcast again, you know, maybe after he leads his first DTMA. We could talk about that. So um, John Molnado said, what letter? What, the D, the T, or the M, or the A? <laughs> Digital transformation, maturity assessment. Uh, Dwayne said, howdy, Zach. Hey, how's it going, Dwayne? Good to see you. Mario said, it took me about 80 hours without the practical. I do think, I will say, I do think that the the SQL and the, you know, the back end training for, um, me mentorship requirements is going to be a little bit quicker using the code Academy pro license that we give you. And it just makes sense. It's all in one platform. So you don't need to go to like Udemy and code Academy. Like it's all going to be in code Academy. You, you, you can still go take those other, uh, Udemy courses if you want to. Um, but, um, you know, again, this whole concept was to remove friction. I, I learned SQL. All right. I, you know, I, I, I knew it before, but I really got great at it with, uh, with the code Academy courses at, on Udemy or uh, excuse me, code Academy when I was working on that project in 2013 with Walker. Um, uh, Greg young always wondered why one note over PowerPoint for Walker said he would fire people for using PowerPoint. So the reason why that is, is, um, 
<laughs> and someone comes to mind. All right. Um, I was talking with this guy. I mean, he's pretty popular on LinkedIn and, you know, I have nothing against him, but you know, I'll say to him, you know, he actually just took a job at one of the big tech companies. I won't say which one, but you know, um, super, super, you know, if you, if you, if, if the average person saw this person, they'd be like, wow, this guy's an expert at digital transformation. This guy's an expert at cloud technologies. He's an ex, maybe even an expert at machine learning and AI because he posts content about it. But he, if you ask him yourself, he say, no, I'm not an SME. And I'm like, well, what the fuck are you? <laughs> Cause you're positioning yourself as that. Like you're in a, just an evangelist, like, you know, stop being a cheerleader and start getting on the field and getting your hands dirty. You know, I, I just don't, I, I never understood that. So basically the reason with the PowerPoint is it only shows that you know how to use PowerPoint, right? If you're a LinkedIn influencer, you doesn't necessarily mean, you know, the technology, right? It just means you know how to use LinkedIn, right? And share other people's content and put your name in the corner. So yeah, that's why. And it's also, it's pretty good for dramatic effect. I'm, I have not personally, I have not seen Walker fire anyone for using PowerPoint. Um, I wouldn't test it though. So, <laughs> um, I have used, I have used some Canva slides that sort of borderline and, but Canva is how I, you know, create content. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'll let you guys find out that one, you know, in the DTMA, he will tell you the reason why we use OneNote is because we don't allow PowerPoint in our organization. And the reason why we don't allow PowerPoint is it only, you know, he's just so sick of all the um, people that sold executives just by having a pretty PowerPoint and didn't actually get the job done. Right. If you, if you have a, if you have a DTMA, you know, trans, I don't even want to call it the DTMA because that's not what it is. If you have a, you know, one of the big three consulting or if you have Rockwell or Emerson come in and do an assessment, they're going to PowerPoint you to, you know, to just to get you to sign the bottom line. Right. And it's not going to actually show that they know what they're talking about. Right. The one, you know, I think Walker said the other day, like if you're talking to a client and they're like, oh, we already have done an assessment with like Rockwell, then what you'll say, you ask them the simple question. Okay. What did what is what is the recommended digital strategy? Like what's what's your digital strategy? And then when they pause and aren't able to come up with an answer, you say, okay, what is their recommended architecture? What technology is their recommended architecture built upon? And then there's one more. I, oh, fuck, I can't remember it. Um, that like really drives it home. Yeah. So what is your digital strategy? What is your technology? Um, What are your minimum tech? Yeah, I think what, are, yeah, what are the minimum technical requirements for your, for your ecosystem? I think that's it. Yeah. Um, I have to ask Walker what this one is, but there's basically three questions that you ask and then they're like, all right, well, we got hoodwinked and you know, PowerPoint is one of those reasons, right? Blake Morris says, I love PowerPoint. I bet you do Blake. I bet you do. Josh Stover who works at, uh, works for Intellic and 4.0. No one uses it. You can too easily say nothing while saying a lot with PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, much, much, yeah, much more simply said there. Uh, Paul writes that I agree. I have 25 years in IT, including web dev, but MES, SCADA, HMI, PLC was the new territory for me, not to mention all the war on protocols and data standards. There really is no, I mean, there really is no war. The, the war is settled. It's not a war. It's, use a unified namespace technology driven approach that's the answer right you're having political resistance you're having objections use a dtma to overcome those right one person can't do it on their own but you can bring in the experts you know to help make the case for you right to um you know get people to get in line or to get them to get out of the way or in rare cases you have them run over right <laughs> walker was like this one was in a more recent dtma but he's like you know Organizations hire me to get chief level fired, right? I've, I've, I've fired many C levels in my career. And, you know, that's oftentimes what they're, I'm hired to do is to get people in line or to get them out of the way, right? So presenting with one note, you can edit whatever you're doing and draw while presenting, makes it much more dynamic. PowerPoint is all pre-built. Yeah, that's a good answer, Josh. <laughs> all right, John said, paper never refuses ink. Right. Yeah. PowerPoint is a static PowerPoint is industry 3.0 through and through. Right. 
it's um, automating your presentation process, not automating your business process. Yeah, it's collaborative session. That's that's really where the value of the DTMA is. Is um, it's not just a a video that you watch. It's a collaborative process where we're asking certain questions that are organized in a certain way to get a certain response. And you know, like that IT man or the IT lead, uh, the chief you know information security officer was like, you know, the way he responded basically told us everything we needed to know. And so that's going to, you know, that, that was in the recommendation that we gave that we turned over to the client in the DTMA um, final document. It was like, hey, chief Inter information security officer, CISO isn't on, you know, isn't isn't 100 percent on board. Right. He, he he's he tends to lean more towards the direct. I mean, if actually, you know, they said they were a service organization, but they're actually Walker's like, you guys aren't you guys are 100 percent some compliance or a service organization, you guys are 100% compliance and security organization, not a service organization at all. In fact, your OT team does all the service organization, service organization tasks, right? Your, your OT team is the one who's actually out there enabling people on the plant floor to do more with less. Um, John Molnaldo, I mean, what let, oh, what letter? Okay. Oh, I'll write it up. Jeff Bezos letter. Walker actually brings this up often in the DTMAs. So, all right. Um, it's Jeff Bezos' famous email. The single most important internal email in the history of Amazon. Um, Let's see. Okay, here it is. In the article, Yegi uh, describes an internal email Jeff Bezos sent to the 150 odd Amazon. It was only 150 employees, by the way, at the time. So I'm going to drop the link to this article I'm reading right now. But in, in short, here's what the article said. Number one, all teams will hence, henceforth expose their data and functionality through service interfaces. Number two, teams must communicate with each other through these interfaces. Think unified namespace, think you know technology ecosystem, REST endpoints, APIs. Number three, there will be no other form of inter-process communication allowed. No direct linking, no point-to-point -point integration, no, no direct reads from another team's data store. You know, that's a manual integration. No shared memory model, no backdoors whatsoever. The only communication allowed is via service interface calls over the network. It's an industry 4.0 company. That's, that's what we try to teach. Number four, it doesn't matter what technology you use. That's what I said earlier. Technology wars are settled. It's, it's the methodology, not the technology. It's, you have to have a technology-driven approach, but you can use many different technologies, right? Highbyte's one of those ways that you can connect many different technologies into a single unified namespace, uh, ingress and egress, right? Um, it doesn't matter what technology you use. HTTP, Cobra, PubSub, custom protocols, doesn't matter. Bezos doesn't care. Number five, all service interfaces without exception must be designed from the ground up to be externalizable, right? To external consumers. That is to say the team must plan and design to be able to expose the interface to developers in the outside world. No exceptions, right? There is no PLC on the plant floor that can't communicate out to the world, to the real world. No exceptions. Anyone who does not do this will be fired. <laughs> number six. And then finally, number seven, thank you and have a nice day. And then, you know, Walker will tell you over the next 18 months, Amazon turned over 11% of their workforce but they became one of the most valuable companies in the world because of that approach. And that's what we're trying to help manufacturing organizations do. We're trying to help them not just survive, we're trying to help them thrive, right? Jeff Rankinen, thank you for joining Mastermind. Jeff's been a loyal supporter of the community, educator at Penn State Technology. And, you know, his investment in Mastermind is going to propagate out through thousands of students that he trains over the next decade. So thank you. Thank you, Jeff. 
Paul said, we don't tell IT if devices are even Raspberry Pi or Arduino hardware. IT corporate personnel are always looking for an Achilles heel to deny approval with these projects, right? So that's a security and compliance organization first, not a service organization. Just because you're a service organization doesn't mean you can't have security and compliance, but there's a distinct difference between which one is first, right? Are you looking for reasons to say no? Or are you saying yes and then looking how to secure that? Two different worlds. And you know, Walker will say, if I can spin up a VM in 10 minutes and, and do what I need to do as an engineer, how can you compete if you take if your employees take four to six weeks? You know, you take four to six weeks to service your employees' requests. The answer is you can't, right? Because it's an iterative approach, right? What you learn today will impact what you what you know and what you know today will impact what you do tomorrow paul look at the first part of the chat just above it zach oh uh, we say edge device or edge of network node but never say server or desktop for infrastructure terms it is important to never say edge server or desktop the term server is it territory and has stopped many of our projects because of the presenter of of the use because our presenter used the word server see that's one of the questions you know in the i'll pull up i'll pull it up right now actually in our one note that everyone in mastermind gets access to it session here's here's the meeting notes intros who we are why are wh wh what are we doing here what are our goals what is the holy grail here are the steps to digital transformation what is a dtma and roadmap that's just the intro then there's a list of questions uh one of the questions we ask is let me see if i find it here um on a scale of one to five, how bureaucratic is IT? Um, they're, they're always like, oh, two, two, three. You know, some people might say it's more, but you know, of course you say it's two or three. Um, uh, no, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to give out all these questions, but I'm, I'm looking for the one. Does IT, yeah, does IT have a monopoly on infrastructure and apps? And they'll say, mm, yeah, basically. <laughs> Right. If you use that keyword server, oh, now IT's got to own it, lock it down, put McAfee on it. Right. Like all this stuff. It can't talk to the stuff that you need. So now you need another server to do DMZ and all this stuff. Um, does IT have a monopoly on infrastructure and apps? And it's not just the question. It's it's the question behind the question. Right. It's it's what they tell you. You you can't just look at on a surface value. You got to sometimes you have to ask the 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 chief. Uh, IT people to leave the room, you know, you say, uh, leave the room and then talk to the actual people. And then they won't talk at first and be like, Hey, you know, we're not going to share anything that you say to the, to the executives. And then they'll start, you know, Oh, that guy was lying. That's not true. You know, sometimes, sometimes in the meeting, they'll just throw their manager under the bus. Like, Hey, come on, let's stick to the facts here. Like that's theory. But in, in reality, that's not actually what happens, you know? <laughs> Oh, man, that guy might get fired. <laughs> but good for him. That's the, exactly the kind of people that we're looking for, right? We're going to recommend uh, that person be on the digital transformation team, right? He'll probably get promoted too. Um, and if he gets fired, we'd probably hire him. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot of good questions in here. Um, Produce and then we have a Purdue security model. So we say, do you use the Purdue security model? Then we, if they don't know what that is, we'll explain it to them. And um, yeah, a lot, a lot of IT people are very resistant to the DTMA. Like <laughs> sometimes we'll get yelled at, um, and that's okay. That's <laughs> you know, Walker's done hundreds of these, and he's not afraid of getting yelled at, right? Because he's driven by the mission, right? And you know, like that CIO who said, hey, you know, we've known this for ten plus years and it just it just hasn't happened yet you know that's not the kind of uh leadership that we're looking you know we're looking for leadership that can make changes that gets shit done that knows what needs to be done and then also does it right their actions match their words john Minaldo said it's just a lowly automation engineer oh oh i'm just a well first of all don't don't speak so lowly of yourself automation engineers are fucking awesome how should I approach my CEO about our digital strategy? As far as I know, we have no digital transformation plans. I need to express why we need to get moving. 
what are some of the what are some of the problems that you you encounter right what what is uh how do you know you know is it everyone's emailing spreadsheets or you know is it everything's being done by paper and pencil like what are some of the the tells that you're not a digital company yet or that you don't have i mean besides just not having digital strategy at the forefront of everyone's mind which is what every company should have how do you know that you're not a digital company Cheryl said, Haha, server is a trigger word. Lee Taylor said, my first laptop to replace my green screen CRT PLC programmer had to be a requested as a PLC programmer because not even the CEO had a laptop back then in 1994. That's one of the questions that we'll ask is, um, you know, after, the, after we ask them, are they a service organization or a security and compliance organization? They'll say, oh, we're a service organization. They'll say, okay. Does, does everyone in the company have administrative controls to their computer? And then someone will start laughing because the an they'll answer no. And you say, um, there you go, right? How is that? How is that a service organization if they have to ask just to change, just to change, um, just to install a new program, right? And they're like, um, oh, we have some, you know, democratization of IT, like some small power apps and, you know, but once, once there uh, gets to be, there's a PO, then we get involved or, um, you know, we're talking about self-service, right? I can go to AWS, I can spin up a VM, I can get my job done and I don't have, you know, the bill just comes through and it gets paid right up to a certain amount or whatever, right? There's, there's ways to do that. John McCann give, um, yeah. So John, I would ask, just ask your, ask your, uh, ask your CEO, what is our digital strategy? Hey, you know, a lot of companies are talking about digital transformation. What are your thoughts on it? You know, do we have a digital strategy to use? All right, let me give up a couple example digital strategy statements. You could say this, you know, hey, I was thinking about, you know, how we can use digital technology to, to help us, our business, uh, you know, do more with less. Here's an example digital strategy statement. We used accurate digital data and information to drive decision making quickly and in real time. We leverage a unified namespace that treats all producers and consumers of, or we leverage an infrastructure that treats all producers and consumers of data and information as nodes in an ecosystem that interact with one another through a unified namespace, right? And then often there's a third sentence that differentiates you from every other company right but i mean if you if you if you read that you know single most important email uh, that jeff bezos wrote like that was essentially what his minimum technical requirements were that's that's what his digital strategy was hey you know the number one all teams will henceforth expose their data and functionality through service interfaces right that that means you know, it's not acceptable for the ot team to just look at the GUI of SAP and then enter the manufacturing order into their uh, MES system or into their SCADA, right? All teams will henceforth expose their data and functionality through service interfaces, right? Um, no direct linking, no, no emailing of data, no shared memory model, no backdoors, right? John McKeon said, or um, Paul said, John McKeon, it would be the best to find the like-minded people in your organization to support. Yes, get find your allies. If no one in upper management in engineering or operations, if no one in upper management is in engineering or operations is on board, it will make it difficult. Yes. You know, it's also good to know, is your, is your company run by accountants in HR or is it run by technologists? Because if it's run by technologists, then they they might have a better time uh, better understanding of of what we're trying to do here. But if it's run by bean counters, you know they they might have that capex mindset. Hey, you know this is a this is this is going to cost us X. So what is our return Y? Digital transformation doesn't work like that. It's a groundbreaking innovation. You know there is a return and it's it's massive, but it's not something that can just easily be calculated because it's a little bit different for every company. Every company. You know, the ideas come from the whole company, right? How do everyone has their job that they all contribute to exposing their data and services into a unified namespace. Greg Young said, curious if you guys have a standard way to onboard the new system or is it different per organization, phase rollout or just a big bang approach? Um, 
So we typically start in the manufacturing execution layer. Um, and we typically start with like a handful of plants. Um, you know, uh, watch, watch um, if you take in the enterprise solutions mini course, um, it's also part of that's module two and, and mentorship. Um, but learning about enter the enterprise solutions, right? How to develop enterprise solutions, right? There's the requirements, there's the corporate requirements, and then there's the plant floor requirements. So when you develop the corporate requirements, each plant has its own requirements and you have to have a mechanism to integrate the corporate requirements and the individual plants requirements. And so, um, yeah, definitely roll phase rollout approach works best. Cheryl said, I worked with a company as recently as five years ago where people were still using peer to peer mapping a drive networking. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm so thankful for this community. We're thankful for you, uh, John. Um, I'm so stoked that, you know, as many of you guys do join the live and it's just me talking. I haven't even shared my screen, uh, which I'll, I'll, I'll get that next week. I just, again, this is like the first time I'm using the, the new MacBook, so I didn't have time to set up the, the restream. So I think this one actually will support my, um, my fancy camera. So and I figured out a way to override the overheat settings. So Paul said exactly, uh, Zach, that is so important to tell our new members on uh, clarity for their audience. Are they an engineer or accountants? Are they from ops front skill lines or HR personnel without expertise, without experience on the plant floor, right? Be wary of the MBA title. It doesn't mean if you have an MBA that you're not worth, um, you know, worth your weight in gold. But if you only have an MBA and you parachute it into the top of the organization, be careful um elon musk will say the same thing right he called it the mbia asian of america you know they're the ones who were like hey let's outsource this plant to mexico to save you know x percent on our labor costs yet we're we're, we're, we're losing all of our capability of innovating right because the engineers who are in america can't work on the plant there's no iteration right they send them over every six months and then you know, if you're making changes every six months, how can you compete against Ch Tesla who's making changes every three hours? You know, like actual production changes to the to the equipment, to the vehicles running off the factory floor multiple times a day are, are being changed. So you just, you know, that's how they were able to reduce the manufacturing cost by 50% in, you know, the first year of manufacturing the Model 3. It's unheard of. Like before that had been done, it was impossible. Are MBAs easier to manipulate? <laughs> this has been my experience. <laughs> Blake. So Blake Morit is the CEO of Rockwell, but he's a troll account. I, I don't actually think he's not actually, eh, I don't think I know he's not the CEO of Rockwell. Because uh, if the CEO of Rockwell were actually on our podcast, he'd be, you know, and he wasn't just worried about next quarter's earnings and he was actually worried about the longevity of the company, they would be making some of the changes that we're talking about. They would be, going away from the connected stack to the open architecture technology because businesses that get it aren't going to be buying solutions that lock them in right don't build a wall on top of a couch right if you go if you go to a model home and they had a couch in there in the model and you know they say hey this is uh this is our top of the line um spec build it's got this amazing you know l-shaped couch integrated right into the wall you know you wouldn't buy that house because you can't replace the couch applications are your couches right your applications are always changing your infrastructure is the house your infrastructure is your unified namespace so <laughs> jeff rankin said hi bolota oh i like that yeah uh little industry news announcement before i gotta go here i got a I got a call actually uh in five minutes here so i got i gotta end on time today but um I buy raise like 3.5 million in venture seed capital with a few different partners. Um, and also uh, Rick Belota was one of them. Rick Belota is an angel investor in high bite now. And he's also part of their um, strategy. He's um, I forget what his actual title is, but uh, you can look it up on LinkedIn. 
So, and Rick, Rick is really active in the, in the discord server. So it's really awesome to have him in there and um, have him contributing both his, you know, mental resources, his financial resources, his time to this community and helping it grow. High bytes, one of our, you know, favorite pieces of software. It's in most of most every one of our architectures that we, that we um, recommend, you know, so Josh said, MBAs worry more about the bottom line. They run businesses, not transformative organizations. Listen to the uh, Sandy Monroe talk about, you know, the MBAs that he was, that were working at that um, medical device company that they're like, oh, you know, we're doing okay. Our revenue is like this. Well, what, and then Sandy asked, well, what's your production doing? <laughs> it's like, you're a dying company, right? And then he helped them, um, you know, redesign their, um, you know, metering pump for neonatal um, applications. And, you know, that was like one of the projects he talked about. It's at the end of the podcast, but yeah, I was actually surprised that, um, you know, the podcast got like 1800 views, but I think it's really good. I think if you haven't watched that, definitely watch that podcast with, um, with Sandy Monroe and Walker Reynolds. Um, if you haven't watched the launch webinar last week, you know, I, uh, I don't say you have to watch it, but I thought it was pretty good. I talked about a story where I never shared before about me and Walker on that project. So that was actually pretty funny. Um, but yeah, you know, it's mostly, that was just our launch webinar, letting everyone know industry 4.0 mentorship program is open for registration. We have about 25 signups so far, um, looking to get as many as possible people that are ready to take the next step to become an industry 4.0 professional, learn the skill sets that you need, become part of a community join us on our monthly calls, you know, get motivated, get, get encouraged, save money, you know, say, you know, there's a, if you're, if you're not part of like a, one of the recognized integrators or you work for the end user, there's like an inductive core certification test that alone costs a thousand dollars and we'll get you access to that for free, uh, through, through our 4.0 solutions mentorship program, uh, code Academy pro there's a bunch of different training out there in the world, you know, we'll tell you exactly what you need to do in the order that you need to do it to, you know, accelerate the results. So that's why uh, we're so proud of that program and we have such good feedback from it so far. So, and then the last but not least, there's like that 99 step practical designed by Walker. It's designed to trip you up. It's designed to be difficult, but once you go through that, you know, you'll be, you'll be uh, ready to hit the battlefields uh, work on working on industry 4.0 projects. You know, you could take a curveball. You could take you could take a few shots, right? You can. Uh, you'll be in the trenches with us. You'll have that practical reviewed by our team. You know, you get feedback from us on a one-on-one -on -one call. So, truly, is a great mentorship program. We don't really see anything else like it in the industry. So, we're really proud of it. Uh, last question here, Blake Moore. Can one leverage RS links and MS access as a UNS? <laughs> um, <laughs> no. You can leverage Kepware and use uh, IoT Gateway to publish into a UNS, but um, or Kepware to Ignition and Ignition to UNS. Cheryl said, uh, "Mastermind program includes several hours on DTMA assessment details." Yes, and we're going to talk about it more. Um, we, so if you're interested, you're like, "Hey, I'm I'm about ready to do a DTMA." We we actually work with you to try to get you to be able to sit in on one, either watch one of the recordings or sit in live with one of the DTMAs that we do. Um, you can even participate and, and chime in. Um, you know, I've sat in on a handful of them. Travis has sat in on many. Um, Alan's doing his, co-leading his first one this week. You know, famous Alan, Alan uh, Ramsey, famous note taker. He's famous for how, how, how well he takes notes. And he's probably taking a note of that right now. And so are all of you guys. So anyways, um, I'm gonna stop rambling. Thank you guys for joining. Um, you have any questions, leave them in the Discord server. We have a great community there. Link below to join that. Um, last Q&A of the week. So we'll be off the next two weeks and we'll be joining, re restarting the Q&As um, at the start of 2022. That's weird to say. Um, but yeah, we'll see you guys on the first Tuesday of 2022 or we'll see you on the Mastermind call this Friday. And thanks so much. We'll see you guys. Bye.